parliamentarians are under siege. They're feeling the full force of the anger, the bitterness and the divisions over Brexit. We want Brexit! We want Brexit! And it's taking its toll at a pivotal moment in history when MPs are making crucial decisions about the country's future. I've been here for, for 14 years and I've never seen it as bad as this. You watch people crying in the lobby sometimes. We've spoken to three MPs and a common staffer about the impact the pressure is having on their mental and physical health. What's been the sort of personal impact for you of all this stress? Well, I'm not afraid to say, although I don't like to talk about myself, that I had stomach problems like so many of my colleagues and was taking large doses of proton pump inhibitors for, 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 for ulcers. Conservative MP Charles Walker voted for Brexit, but struggled with the pressure of trying to help Theresa May get her deal through the Commons. My anxiety was around the, the treatment of the Prime Minister, and it was very stressful. Um, I was very close to her. I was vice chairman of the 1922 committee. I and others were trying to keep the show on the road, and, and at times, as I said, sustained pressure does, does, does get one down. That happens in lots of jobs particularly in the emergency services. I'm not unique, but I'm also, like all my colleagues, a person, a human, and sometimes things can, the stress is, is so extreme it can manifest itself in you feeling not yourself for a period of time. Liars! Liars! All of you are liars! Labour MP Jess Phillips has asked to see a therapist to help her deal with the stress. Every morning when I wake up, I gasp for air. So I'm like, <gasps> What is today going to bring? Because you just don't ever know. And I hate, I hate having good, bad faith in people. I hate when somebody walks into my office that I can't throw my arms around them and give them a cuddle and help them, and that now I have to consider keeping my distance from them. I hate it. It's not the way I've lived my life, my whole life. And so I find it very challenging. Because you're worried that you might be under attack? Yeah. I am under attack. She says her vocal criticism of the Prime Minister's rhetoric over Brexit has made her a prime target for public recrimination. She worries about the safety of her husband and children. I will wildly overreact to things that I would normally be able to cope with, like my kids being out of the house for a certain amount of time, or him even just having gone to the shops for a little bit and not coming back uh, in a time that I think is a safe amount of time, it, it makes me sound mad. I mean, I get that, but I am anxious. Or I feel sometimes I can't deal with the anxiety of thinking that I'm going to arrive home and my family are going to be dead. As MPs struggle to cope, we've discovered a big increase in the use of Parliament's health and wellbeing service. In 2015, before the referendum, MPs made 91 visits. To date this year, that's more than tripled to 310. If you include the Lords and parliamentary staffers, the figures jump from 1,036 in 2015 to 4,057 by the end of 2018. Those on the front line receiving abusive messages are often staff. We spoke to the Chief of Staff for Margot James, one of the 21 Conservative MPs suspended from the party for voting to block a no-deal Brexit. We haven't had death threats per se, but we've had very aggressive emails. And when you read those, you just sort of, it gets you a bit down because you can't escape from it because even away from work, you're getting the Facebook notifications, you're getting the messages and the, and the, the Twitter comments and whatever. You're scrolling under something that's completely innocuous that you might have posted during the day. Um, Marco's social media, for instance, something about, I don't know, nominating Curry House of the Year or something like that, something standard constituency work. And underneath it, there'll be about, you know, 50 posts saying traitor and stuff like that. Has that made you question whether you still want to carry on working in Parliament? I would say working in Parliament at the moment is depressing. I mean, I used to be proud of where I worked. I used to, when my family talked to me about it, and my friends talk to me about it, they're like, oh, you work in Parliament, that's fantastic. You work in a palace and you get to talk to MPs and you're so close to everything. And I was like, yeah, it's great, it's great. But now I don't even like being asked the question. Or when people, you know, I was getting a taxi the other day, someone saying, oh, what do you do for a job? And I, you know, I lied about it. I didn't want to talk about it. I don't want, you know, to talk about Brexit in the car or something like that, you know. 
Labour's Shadow Education Secretary Angela Rayner lambasted the government online for proroguing Parliament. This is the tweet sent to her in reply. It said people like her will perish when civil war comes. 17.4 million people are gunning for blood if we don't leave. What was unique about this one was that it was somebody who didn't anonymise themselves. And then when I clicked, it was actually a serving soldier. When I looked at that, I thought, this is not somebody who's just having a flippant, angry day. This, this could be really serious. It's, it's pretty upsetting when my son says to me, Mum, it's not worth you doing that job, you know, and my children are worried about me and I've had to teach my children how to use the panic buttons at our house. Did you tell them about this particular tweet? Uh, no, but they, they knew about it. What was really unfortunate is my eldest son is 22 and um, we had that tweet and that was um, in the media and at the same time that evening there was a shooting on my road where I live and instantly my son texts me and says, Mum, are you OK? Is everything OK? Because he instantly thought, gosh, Angela's had a death threat, my mum's had a death threat and there's been a shooting on my road where I live. So, yeah, it, was, it scared my, my family. All three MPs insisted they didn't want to be bullied out of a job, but others have had enough. One senior Conservative MP told us she and her staff were too upset by all the abuse and she'd be standing down when, as expected, an election is called within weeks. When Parliament is pitted against the people, the people in Parliament are fearful.